of the gunfighter on the pan caused the spark. And the spark with the flash from here, we hit the main charge in the chamber and ignited the whole. Sometimes the powder here in the pan would go off, but the main charge wouldn't go off. And that's what they call a flash in the pan. If somebody or something comes and goes very quickly, they call it a flash in the pan. Also, soldiers had to maintain their own muskets and buy a plant for a penny. But if they're too miserly to do so, they would have taken a file and rasped or skinned the flint. And that's where you get the name skin flint. Someone who wouldn't pay out for a new flint, they would call it a skin flint. This piece of equipment is called a bandolier, or the 12 apostles. There's 12 bottles of powder, each holding an individual charge, and we had a priming flask and a bag that held, a leather bag that held the musket balls. But in the heat of battle, you can often forget how many or which ones you used, and you may go to load your musket again and discover that you've got an empty bottle. So they had to fade that out and bring in something new, and we'll explain that in a little bit. A musket man on a battlefield would have been protected by a pike man. Basically, it was a 16-foot pike with a metal pole, a metal tip on the pole, and that protected him from a cavalry charge from the horses coming. But basically, he was just a guy with a pointed stick, so they had to utilize it a bit better. So they faded out the pike, and they brought in a thing called a plug bayonet. These were the first bayonets that were used in colonial warfare. The plug bayonet went on the end of your musket, and you could advance on your enemy then. That effectively turned every musketeer into a pikeman, and every pikeman into a musketeer. And I was explaining about how they faded out the band of the year. They brought in a thing called a cartridge shot, which was your gunpowder, your priming powder, and the musket ball, all contained in one small cartridge. It was a piece of paper coated in goose fat to keep it waterproof. And what the musketeer had to do, open the prison and then bite the bullet off. You've often heard about bite the bullet. That's where the term comes from. Bite off the bullet. So if you had no teeth, you couldn't be a musketeer. You'd have to go and join the artillery. And then fill the pan with priming powder. That'd be okay. And then at that stage, you would spit the bullet down into the barrel. Take out your ramrod or your scouring stick, press it hold. You've often seen in the movies like guys are standing doing this. But whilst you're doing that, the other guy shoot you dead. You just have to press it home. Remember, of course, to take out your scouring stick and replace it. <coughs> and then the gun's ready to fire. So hoping these damp conditions and this powder we can get it off. No? It's a priming gully. That powder is a wee bit off. Get, we, 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 we stole the piece, we put a little 